Hey everyone, today I wanted to talk to you about a very important subject of chord scales and also bring you some very good news, but more about that later. On my channel, I have quite a few videos that help train a musician on how to play on chord changes. But one question I come across over and over again is you guys asking me how to figure out which scale goes with which chord. If you have a minor seven flat five chord, what chord scale goes with that? What if you have a major seven chord in front of you? What chord scale do you play over that? And so on. In order to address the countless requests about this subject, I decided to do two things. The first thing I decided to do was to make this introduction video to the subject and familiarize you guys with chord scales as a concept, as well as to show you how to figure out some of the scales to go with some of the chords. The other thing I decided to do was to create an over two hour long video course on the subject of chord scales. More than two hours of video where I explain in painstaking detail <laughs> every nook and cranny of the subject of chord scales. I go into great detail on each one of the natural seven chord scales or modes, as well as several other jazz scales that are very important to be familiar with. This video course I made is going to be launched on my brand new online music school website, www.musicmadebetter.com. I'm very excited to announce it. I'm going to be making endless, in-depth, long video courses on the subjects that you choose and I cannot wait to share it all with you guys. The website is launching in seven days, but as the subscribers of my YouTube channel, you guys get early access to the site and a discount coupon to purchase the Chord Scales video course right away. But keep in mind, the coupon will only be active for the upcoming seven days. After that, I will officially launch my website and the prices will go back to normal. But let's get back to the subject of Chord Scales. So what exactly are chord scales and why are they important? Well, you see, chord scales are kind of like a palette of colors. There's first, there's different sort of families of colors. The reds, the greens, the blues, right? And each one of the colors has different shades. Chord scales are kind of the same. Chord scales are basically scales or modes that you use in order to improvise on different chord changes. And because chords come in all kinds of different colors, happy, sad, tense, and so on. Scales that are played over those chords also come in many different colors to match the colors of the chords. Even though, if you take my video course on chord scales, you will learn that scales actually came first and chords came out of scales. But in jazz today, one of the ways people learn to improvise is at first they learn it sort of in reverse they match the right scale to the chord to know what are the right notes sort of to pick from and what is the right color with which to paint any specific chord. There are seven natural chord scales, and here's the list in front of you. Ionian, Dorian, Phrygian, Lydian, Mixolydian, Aeolian, and Locrian. These are the seven classic Greek modes the seven most commonly used modes or chord scales. Now, these are just the basic seven. There are many other ethnic scales, jazz scales, all kinds of synthetic scales. You can make your own scales. There's no end. But for improvising, you really need to know these seven and a couple more that I talk about in my video course, like altered scale or symmetrical diminished scale, etc. So one important thing to remember about these scales is that they show up in a particular order. And if you know the order of the modes, then you can pretty much arrive at any mode from any key. I'll explain. If we look at the key of C, where there is no sharps or flats, we will see how the modes or chord scales show up in order. So here we go. Let's play from C to C. That's the first mode or chord scale, Ionian. If we play from D to D, we get the second chord scale, Dorian. If we play from E to E, we get the third chord scale, Phrygian, and so on and so forth with the rest of them. So now let me give you a quick example of how you might arrive at some of these chord scales once you know which ones go with what. Let's take a blues in C. What is the first chord? 
The first chord is C7. Next chord is F7. Back to C7. And F7. F7. C7. A7. D minor 7. G7. C7. G7. These are the chords. So let's see. What scales might you use to play over these chords? Sure, some of you might say you could use the blues scale or the pentatonic scale, and you would not be wrong to say that. Except you see, scales like the blues scale and the pentatonic scale, they're often used as sort of a one-fits-all, which is their great strength, but is also their great weakness. Scales like the blues scale or the pentatonic scale are very useful in helping you avoid wrong notes, but they're not particularly useful in helping you intricately paint the chords. It's kind of like when you go to a cheap store to buy clothes and you buy a shirt. And when you wear the shirt, you can see that they made it in such a way that it could fit different body types. And so it doesn't look bad, but at the same time, it doesn't look as good as if it was made to your measures, to your shoulders and your waist and your arm length, right? So it doesn't look bad, but it doesn't look great. Same goes for the blues scale and the pentatonic scale when it comes to really painting out and articulating chord changes. These two scales will never fail you, but they won't take you very far either. In order to really paint a picture when you improvise, you really do have to know which scale goes with which chord. And you're not really going to get away with loosely wrapping the blues scale around everything and calling it a day. So, okay, well, in the case of our C blues, what chord scales might we use to play over each one of those chords? Let's see, what's the first chord? The first chord is C7. The most fundamental and basic scale that's typically used over a dominant 7 chord is the Mixolydian scale. So if we have a C7, we're going to have to play a C Mixolydian over it. Now, remember I told you about the order in which the scales show up? Mixolydian is the fifth in that order. We have Ionian, Dorian, Phrygian, Lydian, and Mixolydian is the fifth. So if Mixolydian is the fifth, remember how we found each one of the chord scales in the key of C? So Mixolydian is the fifth mode, right? So if we want to play Mixolydian from C to C, we have to figure out in which major scale the note C is the fifth, and then play a scale from C to C using the key signature from the major scale in which C is the fifth. Again, if we want to play Mixolydian, which is the fifth mode from C to C, we have to find a major scale in which the note C is a fifth, and then play from C to C using the key signature of that major scale. So, okay, in which major scale is the note C the fifth? Hmm, fifth below. In F major. Right? F, G, A, B flat, C. Great. So that means if we want to play Mixolydian from C to C, we need to play from C to C, and use the key signature from the key of F, right? Because Mixolydian is the fifth mode and C is the fifth note in F. So we need the key signature from F major and then use that key signature when we play from C to C. So then what is the key signature in F major? It's one flat, right? B flat. Great. That means we have to play from C to C and use our B-flat to make the C scale Mixolydian. Yep. And as I said before, C Mixolydian is what you use over a C dominant seven chord. And A Mixolydian is what you use over an A dominant seven chord. And B-flat Mixolydian is what you use over a B-flat dominant seven chord, right? Dominant seven chords take a Mixolydian scale. 
They also take many other awesome scales. And I talk more about those in my course. But for now, the most basic fundamental one over dominant seven is going to be Mixolydian. So we found that C Mixolydian is this. From C to C, using a B flat note in the middle. Why B flat? Because B flat is the key signature of a major key in which the note C is the fifth. Why do we care that it's the fifth? Because we're trying to find the fifth mode, right? Mixolydian. So here it is, C Mixolydian, we're the first chord of the blues. Okay, see, now we found what scale goes over this chord. Why is it cool? Why is it important? Well, these notes now can help us improvise over the first chord of this blues, right? Everything I'm playing over this first chord of the blues here is from the Mixolydian scale. And once you know the scale, you can find the shapes inside and all kind of cool things. You see why chord scales are important? Once we found the scale, we can find all kind of cool stuff to play inside the scale. But that's a separate conversation in and of itself. But as I'm sure you can see, you first have to find the scale itself in order to find all that cool stuff inside it. Okay, so what's the next chord we have? The next chord is F7. Again, like I said, F7 takes a mixolydian, F mixolydian, because that's what dominant seven chords take. How did I arrive at F mixolydian? Same thing, mixolydian is the fifth chord scale. So I need to find a major scale in which the note F is the fifth. Then when I find that major scale, I'm gonna borrow its key signature and use it when I play my F scale. And that's going to make my F scale mixolydian. So in which key is the note F the fifth? B flat major. B flat C, D, E flat, F, the fifth note. Okay, so what's the key signature of B flat major? Two flats, B flat and E flat. Okay, great. So if we want F mixolydian, we're gonna play from F to F using a B flat and an E flat. So let's see. There's the F chord and here's F mixolydian. B flat, E flat. That's the scale. See, again, we found the scale and now we're free to find all these cool things inside it. So what do we have so far? First chord is C mixolydian. Second chord is F mixolydian. Back to C mixolydian. F mixolydian again, F mixolydian again. Back to C, mixolydian. A mixolydian. And like I said, all dominant chords take other cool scales too. Like for instance, the altered scale, like this one. But for now, let's stick to the basics so you can understand. The next chord is D minor seven. D minor sevens take a couple of different minor chord scales. The one we're gonna use here is going to be called Dorian. Dorian is a chord scale or a mode that is often used over minor seven chords. How do we arrive at Dorian? How do we play Dorian from D? Well, Dorian is the second of the seven traditional modes. That means we have to find a key in which D is the second and then use the key signature of that key and play from D to D with that key signature. In which major scale is D the second? In C major scale, right? 
D, D. Okay, so great. So then what's the key signature of C major? No key signature, right? There's no sharps or flats. So that means we play from D to D using the key signature of C major, which is no key signature. So here it is, D Dorian. And again, see, we found the D Dorian scale, and now we're free to explore inside it and all the cool things that live inside it, like these arpeggios, like the intervals, like fourths that live inside this Dorian, like thirds that live inside this Dorian. And so on. But you see, we can only find this cool stuff if we know what the scale is. So D minor takes a Dorian, G7, which again, for our intents and purposes, will take a G mixolydian. How do we find that? In which key is the note G, the fifth? Because mixolydian is the fifth mode. In C, okay, we'll then play from G to G with the key signature of C, C major, which is of course no key signature at all. So play from G to G with no key signature. And that's how you get mixolydian. And back to C dominant 7. And then back to G dominant 7. So guys, this is just kind of just the tip of the tip of the iceberg. There's a lot more scales. There's a lot more inside the scales. This is a very important skill to cultivate. A skill without which it's virtually impossible to improvise, except only by ear. And even when you improvise by ear, you'll still be doing the same thing. You'll just be doing it intuitively, right? You will ultimately have to figure out which scales go with which chords, whether you do it formally like here or by yourself, just do it by ear. But be careful doing it by ear, even though it is the ultimate and the best method, it can also throw you off sometimes, depending on how great your ears are. I go into very great depth on all of this and a lot more in my two hour plus video course on the introduction to chord scales. Over two hours of video examples, theory, and demonstration separately on every single one of the seven Greek modes or chord scales. And then I show you guys a couple more different scales that are really important for jazz, like the altered scale that I kind of briefly touched on. The video course will be available on my brand new website that is launching in one week. I leave a link in the description and on the screen. And remember, the website is launching in seven days. For the upcoming seven days, as my subscribers, you guys get early access to the site and a discount coupon that will only be active for the next seven days, at the end of which I will officially launch my website and the coupon will no longer work. Also on the website, I'll be able to answer more questions and answer in greater detail to anyone who has any difficulties or needs one-on-one -on -one guidance. Thank you so much for checking out the video and I'm looking forward to seeing you here again and on my brand new website, www.musicmadebetter.com. Cheers.